Well, I went to town and bought some plugs for my generator and bought a new starter relay and some six gauge cable so I can make my battery connections and stuff. And it went and got cold and snowy outside. Uh, show you outside here real quick. Actually, uh, let me just, let's go hand mount for a little while here. Handheld, whatever. I guess it's mounted in the hand. So, got some snow outside. Yay. Nice and pretty out there. Um, much better than the dirt storm we've had. It is currently, uh, I guess you could call it six degrees out Fahrenheit. I'm gonna sit on my little stool here and figure out how to do some wiring. Well, I got some stuff done tonight, but not a lot. It's uh, after 10 o'clock at night now. So I'm gonna call it quits on this. But I came up with a plan for changing my hitch here. Put you back on the tripod. Yeah, never mind the caster here. I was playing with that too. I wanna put a caster on this thing, so like when it's here in the garage, I can just push it around by hand. There might be other times too when this little caster would be okay for traveling around outside and not sinking clear into the ground, maybe out here in the driveway. But as what I did figure out is if I mount the hitch here and have it pivot at this bolt hole right here and have it pivot up, this hitch will fold up out of the way and that'll give me a lot more room instead of having this coupler sticking out from the front of this trailer, which is about 11 and a half inches long total. I'll just have this two and a half inch square tubing sticking out. Now you say, wait a second, the gas tank overhangs, so it's gonna be more than two and a half inches. You are correct. I'm actually gonna move the gas tank back, which means I actually have to move the generator and the engine back. But I really don't like having this gas tank hanging over the front of this anyway. Um, I guess I was just figuring with having that pushed in there, you know, the gas tank is not in danger of getting hit by anything that's gonna act as a guard, but I find that most of the time I remove this hitch, most of the time, and then usually I put it under the chipper like that to store it. But I don't like having that hitch laying on the ground, especially outside you know, in the dirt or something like that. And I don't like having that coupler stick it out that far. It's a real shin kicker. So now that I'm changing how this hitch works, I'm gonna move the engine and the generator back a little bit. I need to anyway, because this thing is really, really tongue heavy. Yeah, I know I don't have anything built back there on the back half of it yet, but still, even by the time I get whatever I'm building back there added on, I still feel like it's gonna be really tongue heavy. Uh, so anyway, point being, Got my plans etched and sketched a little bit here of what I'm gonna do. Uh, I thought I had two sheets of that, whatever. The other one's outrigger design I was working on. But anyway, I'm gonna make the thing flip up so I got some dimensions made. I'll get that entered into the computer and cut that out on the plasma table another evening. And I'm gonna remove this tank and cut the tack welds off the engine and the generator frame real quick and slide that all back. I'm gonna change how this tank is mounted. I just got it on two strap irons right here that stick out. But now that I have the plasma table, I wanna make a little brace that attaches to the angle iron this engine is bolted to these cross members back in here, these cross members. Uh, I'm gonna make a brace that comes up off of that and holds the tank. Um, one of the ideas I have is to make the engine and generator and gas tank remove off the frame of it. So like if I wanted the generator somewhere, like take it in the bed of the pickup or something, I could take that off, put it in the bed of the pickup, have a generator elsewhere. It's an idea I'm toying with. So anyway, guess I'm saying, I'm gonna be making lots of changes. <sighs> it's a work in progress. I'm having fun, that's why I enjoy this, but anyway. Yep, now that it's quarter after 10 in the evening, 
I am going to call it quits here. We'll see y'all another day. Now I'm going to take the gas tank off of this thing, cut these front mounts off, and grind the welds off on these cross members. I don't have full complete welds on these cross members, thank goodness. I believe in the theory of when you're building something, it's best just tack weld stuff because you never know what you got to change later. I got a little crazy with one of these welds here, but they're not they're not completely welded down. Some of these welds are in areas that are a little bit difficult to get with the angle grinder. So I'm going to fire up the Yes Welder Cut 55DS and see if we can make a little bit of quick work out of this. I'm also going to remove this piece of square tubing under here because I'm going to change how this hitch fits on here completely. So, cutting that off to keep the sparks from flying around, I'm going to put this piece of scrap back here and deflect them down a little bit. See if I can figure out how to get in here. All right, so anyway, we're over here at the plasma table, running the old true cut plasma table here, and I've got a scrap piece of quarter inch plate laying here. Okay, I'm set up in the mill here. I indicated off of this hole. Basically just used my annular cutter in the hole. Dialed in my DRO. And is what this will do. This probably won't make sense to show you right now anyway, because I can't even make sense of it right now. <laughs> like that? Yes. No. Yes. No. Yes? Yes. Ah. See, I don't even know how to make sense of this. So, this will be the frame of the wood chipper going off this way. So, when it, this will be the down position. And then the hitch will flip up, which is essentially the wood chipper moving. So, it'll be this way, will be the frame. So, the hitch is now in the upright position. So, there will be a pin here that will transfer. I'll pull that pin out lift up the hitch, put the pin back in. So that is how that's going to work. All right, so now I need to drive over and drill this hole. switch over to my twist drill. Mm. 
a slip on this hole. And when I try this out, it actually catches on that lip. So I'm use my little air beveler here and put a chamfer on that. Oh yeah, nice and smooth. Okay. Now I'm gonna go get a bolt, figure out what length of bolt that needs for both these plates. Cause this one here will be bolted in. And then this bottom one here will be the pin. So go grab a bolt and we'll uh, weld this thing on. And yep, that's in the way. I gotta move this. Gotta move this out of the way first, don't I? Never mind. All right, so cut this off next. my ball jack down here on the floor along with an angle iron clamped onto the frame to kind of line all these plates up. I've got the bolt where the hitch is going to pivot just finger tight. I want to see if I can't tack weld this stuff in place and hopefully it's all where it's supposed to be. So that angle iron is flexing a lot right there. I'll probably add a brace back here. It's actually why I left this 90 degrees instead of you know doing a 45 or something like that on the front. And so I can add something back here. Not sure what at this point in time. So we'll see how that goes. But uh, anyway, hitch is back on. I can at least grab Claire out here at the end and lift up on this thing and move it around a whole lot easier. But now, I gotta figure out a jack stand for this thing because I went and cut that all up. So, more work. Oh, and I'm not gonna weld in here either. I'm not gonna weld that because when this hitch folds up, you know, I gotta have clearance in there. So I hope those welds are good enough. They look good enough to you? I think they're good enough. I know, they're downhill welds, therefore they'll break just as soon as five pounds gets put on. I'm out of time for working on this project right now. I've got to get on to a million other projects. I almost feel guilty taking time out to work on this stuff, but for my mental health, sometimes I just have to stop doing what I'm doing, you know, work-wise or whatever, and just have a little me time here and there. So I'm gonna go ahead and just say this is gonna be the end of this video because with working on this engine and getting all that going and redoing this hitch, that's probably enough for a full episode. But we did buy a shipping container it allowed me to get some stuff out of this garage and just give me some more space in here to work so I can have stuff like the wood chipper just sitting here in the garage a lot of times and work on it whenever I want to. So I guess what I'm saying is once we get that shipping container set in place, which will be a while because i got to have some rock brought in for it to set on, we've got to take down this old garden shed out there, we'll probably end up having to redo the fence in our yard and all that stuff, so it'll be a while before we get that thing set up and running, unfortunately. But... Once we get to that point, maybe I can have this wood chipper sitting here in the garage a lot and work on it whenever I want to. Or maybe I can uh, get myself a little 110 volt welder and work in the shipping container on this project once in a while out there instead of having it here in the garage. Anyway, that'll be the end of this episode. Thank you all for watching and sticking with me. The last four years have been really, really rough on me. Uh, 
A lot I could say about that, but I try to keep that off of YouTube. Uh, yeah, all right, anyway, till the next one, which hopefully isn't three years or whatever it's been since I did the last Woodchipper episode. Way too long.